Hi, everyone, and um, I guess good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, because we're all over the place. Um, and um, hopefully we'll have a fun time today. So let me tell you, my name is Kumar, Kumar Goswami. I'm uh, the CEO and uh, a co-founder of Comprise. And what I'll do today is tell you a little bit about Comprise, who we are, what we do. Um, and then we're going to fire it up with uh, two demos uh, from Mike uh, Piercy and Mohit Dawan. And they'll go into the details of how we do it and some of the architecture behind it. So with that, let's get started. So as it says, comprise intelligent data management. What does that mean? So what we do is we focus on probably the two biggest problems that businesses have with data today. As you probably know, data is growing like crazy. Um, and the question is, how do you manage all of that data? And actually, we're focused on unstructured data. So problem one, how do you manage all that unstructured data? And number two, how do you extract value from that data? Because that data has a lot of value and you want to be able to be more efficient and, 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 and be able to also be more competitive. And as I mentioned to you, we're talking about unstructured data. And by unstructured data, I mean the stuff that's not in a database. So uh, your audio files, video files, um, your um, uh, log files, uh, you know, seismic data, genomics files, things of that. So that's what we're really focused on. All right. And, and so if you look at us, it's a, um, we're, a, we're a SaaS company. Um, we do multi, multi cloud data management. Um, and basically, as I was mentioning, we analyze and help you manage your unstructured data. Um, and it's a distributed scale out architecture. And Mike and Moat are going to talk more about that. Most of our customers are Fortune 500 data heavy uh, enterprises. However, if you have 100 terabytes or more, I think you'll find value in Comprise. Um, again, one of the key things that we do is, is that we manage data across your silos, across cloud, across data centers. And since customers are really drowning in data, they, they, they find the need for that. Um, and that's why, by the way, through a tough pandemic year uh, in 2020, uh, we grew our revenue by, by 70%. And of course, our global resellers, HPE, IBM, Pure Storage certainly helped. And we also have some very strong relationships with AWS, Azure, and we're working with Google, NetApp, and Dell EMC, and so forth. So that kind of hopefully gives you a very quick um, uh, update on who we are and what we do. And now I'm going to kind of dig into the problems we're trying to solve. So what we hear from customers Look, data is growing uh, like crazy. And you've heard of it, and IDC tells you it's going to be about 175 zettabytes by 2025. One fun fact I hear of zettabytes about, about uh, 250 billion DVDs. So that should give you an idea of just how much data there is. And if you look at this uh, cur curve here, the bulk of that data is purple, or other way to put it, the bulk of that data is unstructured. And that's what we're focusing on because there are not a lot of products out there that work with and manage unstructured data. The other thing is the companies that we're working with are typically hybrid. So they have data centers, probably multiple data centers. They're in the cloud, multiple clouds. Um, and so again, to manage things based on, you know, whatever management the cloud provider gives you or whatever uh, uh, management that particular storage vendor gives you is fine, but it's very siloed. Um, and so you don't have a global aspect or an understanding of all of your data and be able to manage globally and that's one of the things that we that we find that customers are asking for so they want again an efficient way to manage their data and they want to be able to extract value from that data so there's a real push if you will to okay how can i take all you know out of my 40 billion files how can i find the 3 million that makes sense and push it into my ai engine or my ml engine um, and, and get something out of it and understand something and become more efficient more competitive and so on so again, global way to manage data, unstructured data across clouds. So before going into how we do it or what we do, or I should say how we do it, let's talk a little bit about what's going on out there. How are people thinking about it? Well, realize that we've come to a massive amount of data rather quickly. And so in many ways, people are continuing to operate as if they just have a few gigabytes of data. And what we really need is people to sort of stop and rethink how they're approaching data management. 
And so many of the customers we go to, they're used to, the, you know, they're, they're in this endless cycle. They're just buying more storage and buying more storage. But now with the level to which their data is growing, doubling every, every other year, um, this becomes economically infeasible. And so they need to find a different way to do things. Um, the other thing is they back up everything. Right. Um, you know, they don't analyze it. They just back it up. And when you back it up, you've got backup license costs, your backup windows probably stretching beyond you where you want it to be. And you're keeping multiple copies of that backup. So there's additional storage costs. You're probably doing DR. You're probably mirroring it. So there's a mirroring cost. And does it make sense to do all that with all this massive amount of data? That's the issue, right? Of course, now you've got the cloud. Um, and so now the cloud does have some cheap tiers. And a lot of people are saying, hey, I'm going to use this as a cheap storage locker. I'm going to send my data to the cloud. I guess I call it a cloud graveyard to die. But really, if you think about it, that the stuff in the dev, the cloud has all sorts of tools. There's also third party tools that can use your data in the cloud so long as it's accessible and in the cloud format. It's not in a proprietary format. So the idea of using the cloud as a cheap storage locker is not necessarily the best way to go forward with respect to data management, something that we really look at and, and, and consider. So the, the long and short of it is, look, with the amount of data that we have now, you can't treat all data the same. You got to look at it. You got to understand it. You got to know first, understand that data, and use that knowledge to better manage that data and better extract value from that data. That's what we're been hearing. That's what we're learning, and that's why, again, the tremendous growth that took place for us even in the pandemic year, because customers really need that insight and they want to be able to manage based on that insight. So. Let's talk a little bit about that. So one of the key things, I guess, is know first. You see, know first, move smart, manage smart, and take control, right? What do we mean by know first? So one of the things is, and this is something Mike and Mohit are going to go into in more detail, so you can ask them all about it. But at a high level, what are we doing? You get our stuff up and running. It's in the cloud. Um, you get what are called workers or observers running on-premises for your on-premises storage, on-premises data store, on-premises file stores. And what we do is we start analyzing your data. We start looking at it and say, hey, how much do you have? You know, we look at the, you know, your file name, your file size, your, when, when it was created, when it was last accessed, you know, what kind of file it is, what kind of object it is. So we look at your cl cloud objects, your cloud files, your on-premise objects, your on-premise files. And we create what we call a virtual global data lake. Now, with that virtual global data lake, we don't store data there. We store all these attributes that I just talked about, file size, file name, owner, things of that sort. And now we give you ways to be able to analyze your data no matter where it resides. And you can find out how much data you have. You'd be surprised how few people know exactly how much data they have. So how much data they have, how fast it's growing, who's growing it, um, you know, um, and then you can do what ifs. Hey, if I take this data and I move it to such and such cloud provider uh, and their price is this and that, hey, do I save money? And if so, how much do I save? What if I move more? What if I move less? And so all that kind of information, that's what the insight that we allow you to get. Um, and now with that insight, you can make plans. And with those plans, you can move data. You can migrate data from one cloud to another, from on-premise to the cloud or vice versa. You can replicate data to the cloud for in an inexpensive DR. And one of the areas where we have a lot of patents, you can transparently archive data. That one's a huge one. It took us some, some time to make happen. But imagine that you are, you know, you've got a bunch of expensive stuff on your, uh, sorry, a bunch of data on, on your expensive uh, file server. Most of it's not hot. It hasn't been touched in over a year. Imagine if you can just move that to the cloud, but it still looks like it's on that expensive NAS. So it doesn't disrupt your users. It doesn't disrupt your data protection workflow, nothing, and everything is seamless. That's what we do. That's what we have some patents for. And the other key aspect of these patents is when we do it, we put it, let's say we put it in the cloud. We put it in the cloud in native format. So let's say we put it in AWS. Well, guess what? You can use AWS tools to look at it, analyze it. You can use third-party tools. You can feed it, and you can then feed your AI engines. Coming back to number one, virtual global data lake, we have a deep analytics where you can do searches. Find this and this file that were created in such and such time with such and such size, and maybe you find your needle in a haystack. It's 3 million files out of 40 billion files, and you take those 3 million and you can operate on it. You can transparently archive it, replicate it, migrate it, et cetera, et cetera. So those are some of the functionalities that we provide, again, holistically and globally across clouds, across NAS storage, across data centers.
couple of use cases. Um, on the left, I'll tell you, uh, during this rather tough time, a, a vaccine vendor, uh, a vaccine maker, uh, uh, purchased about five petabytes of our stuff. Um, and why? Because they were generating 10 terabytes of data every day. They were running out of data center space and they wanted to externalize their data. And so they came to us, they heard about us through a large cloud vendor uh, who actually brought us in. Uh, we showed them what we could do. We showed them that I think it was like 65, 63% of the data hadn't been touched in 22 months. Um, and so they said, fantastic, let's, let's um, archive that stuff transparently. That's what we want to do. Um, they moved about a petabyte or a petabyte and a half. And in 90 days, they got it all set up and they had to, you know, they had to go through all sorts of production, um, uh, sanitization and things like that because they're building the va vaccine. And so they, nothing could you know, screw anything up. Anyway, they got that all up and running. They moved about a petabyte to the, to the cloud and they'd already recouped the cost uh, of, of Comprise. And now they're talking to their line of business users saying, look, the stuff that we stuck over there in the cloud is you know, wide open and accessible. Let's use that Comprise deep analytics to find the needle in the haystack and feed our, our, uh, our research engines. So that's what's going on there. Another thing is that we've been really focused on being able to move data, right? And so the idea is you want to be able to move data quickly and you want to move data uh, you know, with, with high fidelity. And so we really focused on the ability to be able to move data from on-premises to the cloud and vice versa. Um, and just to give you an idea, you know, um, you know, especially with NFS, we are able to um, you know, migrate data about 27 times faster than an open source tool like RSync. And if we do it over a WAN, it's even faster. And so we're being recommended as the go-to migration product if you're gonna be moving wholesale into the cloud. And so that's that. And the, the last thing that I want to talk to you about was it's an EDA company. They are going to a very large uh, modernization of their on-premise architecture as well as their cloud architecture. So they're actually, they actually have custom network attached storage running in the cloud and they want to be able to run that much more efficiently because it's pretty expensive. File storage in the cloud is not cheap. And so with Comprise, they're able to do it all. They can manage and analyze and manage data that's on premise. They can manage and analyze data that's in their network attached storage in the cloud. And they can manage and an analyze and manage data that's on, on, you know, on object stores in the cloud. So they get to do it all with one platform and that's what they've brought in. And again, through this process of archiving and, and, and so forth in the cloud, they've been able to reduce their storage costs significantly. With that, um, let me, so that hopefully that gives you a sense again of who we are, what we do, how our customers are using us. Today, we're going to talk about three cloud use cases. Um, and so let me kind of set that up and then Mike and Mo, uh, we're going to take, uh, take it from there. So number one, we're going to talk about data migration. So this is right, think of it as a wholesale lift and shift of your workload into the cloud. Now, back in the day, um, you know, uh, you didn't have files, uh, file stores in the cloud. And so if you wanted to lift and shift, you had to change your applications to work with S3 and work with objects. Now, there's a huge trend because there's cloud NASs out there to be able to do that lift and shift. And that's what data migration to the cloud is all about. As I was mentioning to you, we have really worked on engines that allow us to move that stuff with high fidelity. You can move 400, 500 shares in one go right into the cloud. And, and it's ideal if you want to be able to do a lift and shift of your workload to the cloud. So that's, that's number one. The second use case is maybe something that's going to happen more frequently. I don't know. Um, and that is that, hey, look, I want to put my toe in the water. I'm not going to move all my applications to the cloud. I'm going to move one or two or three to the cloud. Great, Comprise helps me do that. But hey, I still want to save money. I still want to be able to reduce my storage costs because I'm, I'm generating 10 terabytes every day. How do I solve that problem? Well, you do what we just talked about, archiving. Take the data that's on those expensive on-premise NASs and probably be able to archive 60 70% to the cloud. And when you do that, you haven't disrupted anything anywhere else. You've still got a couple of lift and shift stuff running on the NASs in the cloud. So you're, 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 you've got your toe in the water, you're learning to make sure that works. Meanwhile, you're saving money by archiving to the cloud and your line of business users can take the stuff that we archive and use you know, tools, cloud tools, third party tools. So you haven't lost anything. And so we think number two, sort of the hybrid data management approach may be where people go. 
And then eventually at some point go, hey, I like what's happening in the cloud. I want to move wholesale to the cloud. No problem. What was already on your primary NAS is that you haven't, that you've archived off of, but you haven't taken to, 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 to the cloud provider. You can migrate that to the cloud provider. And guess what? All those linkages between this and the stuff on the object store that you archive will automatically translate, nothing lost. Off you go. Not you're not going to skip a beat, and that's hybrid data management. And finally, now that you're finally fully in the cloud, number three, you want to be able to do what that EDA company is doing. They've got a bunch of expensive NASs in the cloud now. You want to manage that better, manage that more efficiently, manage that with open standards, so you don't lock your data away. And that's what you can do again with Comprise. So it's a beautiful kind of a solution because we don't care where your data resides. We don't care if it's a file. We don't care if it's an object. The whole idea is to be able to transparently work with that data and, you, and, and be able to store it, manage it, and use it in the most efficient way possible.